Um, of course, connecting the inverse to transparency here, and of course, popping in the correct refraction index as well. I'm going to put a very pale tint on my refractions there and just give them a little bit of blurring too. And there we have him, a lovely looking little bunny in this icy, glassy kind of finish. And basically the exact same thing is going on in these other Fresnel nodes. The DP one here is particularly interesting. It has a slightly different way of entering the IOR. The IOR A and B. I am presuming, I don't know for certain because DP hasn't documented it on his site, but I am presuming that it's to serve a more accurate version of the Fresnel function. Again, I don't want to get into the numbers of it here because it's not important, but I will tell you that part of the Fresnel reflectance function isn't just the index of refraction of the material that the ray is entering. Part of the overall equation is also the index of refraction of the medium that the ray is currently in. So if we're holding a glass object, the refraction index of the air as well as the index of the glass are both taken into account when computing a correct Fresnel effect. Which is which, don't ask me, if I had to guess, I would presume that IOR A is the current external IOR, so the air, and IOR B is the materials. At least that's the way I would logically notate it. That said, it's not too illogical to think that IOR A is the material that the node is applied to. So, have a play.